morning. Uh, so like she said, uh, my name's Ari and I'm here with my colleague Matt. Uh, we're both uh, GIS data engineers at Tableau. Um, first off, does anybody know what Tableau is? Show of hands. Uh, put your hand down if you're from Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still impressed. Um, so Tableau is a company that specializes in data visualization. We connect to all big data bases from Hadoop to Excel. Um, and one of the features of that product is a map. So our customers can display their data on a map, a slippy map basically. And we also have a geocoding product and Matt and I both work quite integrally with these two products. Um, <clears throat> how do we use OpenStreetMap? Um, OpenStreetMap mostly comes in to play for our product in the base map. Uh, we use it to visualize uh, features such as roads and water. <clears throat> this is an example of a rather simple Tableau Viz that uh, Kali and I baked up about three weeks ago with the Brexit vote. Um, so, like I said, one of our products is the map. Uh, the other angles of Tableau are all about graphs. Um, we have R integration, statistics, other packages outside of that. Um, but one thing that you can do with Tableau is create these visualizations, compact uh, dashboard. And you, if we had the internet, I could show you guys. We can actually filter on each one of these um, voting regions uh, according to the graph and then you zoom to it on the map and it gives that interactive uh, mapping ability to our customers. <coughs> uh, another feature, uh, this is obviously Nepal. This is something I did right after the Nepal earthquake. There's something like 200,000 ways in here that I queried out of overpass from OSM. Um, and you know, on this map, uh, our customers can filter, we can you know, hover over a road, learn more about it, the metadata that I queried out of overpass. So yeah, it's a pretty cool tool and it, you know, this is how our customers use it. So why am I here? Uh, today I wanna tell you uh, how we got road shields out of OSM ways. Um, you know, it seems like a rather, oh, well this sounds simple, but it's complicated by the fact that we do have this product that we envision our customers putting their data on the map. So the main point of the visualization isn't actually the base map, it's actually their data. So we don't want the map to be too cluttered, um, specifically with a lot of road shields, which would happen if we told OSM, hey, for every way, give me a road shield. That'd be pretty dense. So we really are aiming for, as you can see here in Seattle, this very simple view. <coughs> and we also need a set that was comprehensive. Uh, we also need different rendering styles for both the United States and global shields. Um, so for the United States, we wanted to be able to show uh, graphically the difference between interstates and state highways and stuff like that. And we also wanted to be able to adjust the label density by zoom level, um, which made it very necessary, we found out, to have points instead of lines. So essentially, we need to go from OSM way, which is a line, to a point. And we need different layers of points for each zoom level as our customers drill into the map. So I'm gonna uh, hand this over to Matt so he can tell you more about the data extraction. <coughs> cool, thanks Ari. Uh, yeah, so as Ari had mentioned, the basic problem is lines to points, right? And so um, to actually load the OSM planet file uh, into a Postgres database, we use the Impossum tool. Um, this is a Python-based tool that takes the OSM planet file and generates a series of uh, tables that are separated by uh, logical groupings of themes like motorways, land use areas, et cetera. And for our purposes in generating the actual road shields, we looked at data that were inside of the OSM motorways table. And looking at this table, you know, we wanted to extract out just a subset of linear features that represented um, data that we would actually want to generate a shield point from, right? And so we found that there were uh, a few tags of interest specifically like uh, highway equals motorway, trunk, and then the uh, link or ramp features for both of those types of tags. Uh, so once we kind of identified which data sets that we wanted to actually like subset, which tags we wanted to subset, uh, we went ahead and extracted them out as shapefiles. 
But the challenge that we ran into was that during our initial load using Impossum, we actually dropped the relevant uh, numerical identifier for a particular um, highway segment of interest, right? So one example of this that you can see here is uh, an arterial in Seattle called uh, Aurora Avenue North, which is kind of like the colloquial name, but it has a, a numerical identifier of WA uh, Route 99. And what we realized was that in our initial load of the OSM planet file, we actually were only bringing in the uh, name tag for that particular way, which was the, the more colloquial name, Aurora Avenue North. Um, and so kind of looking at the data, we realized, oh, well, we need the, these data in the ref tag, uh, the data that were contained in the ref tag. So we modified a mapping file that's part of uh, the Impossum package that's designed to essentially extract out a particular subset of uh, tags from the OSM planet file and convert them into these uh, resultant post gist tables. And so once we actually modified that to include the ref tag, we then re-imported the planet and uh, were able to have these roadways that contained both the uh, name segment, which we wanted the text label for, as well as the data that we wanted to extract for the road shield. And so Ari is gonna take it over and talk about how we actually process those linear features. So now at this point we have lines, good start. Um, and we're, our goal is still to get a shapefile of points that can be used to generate these shield positions at different zoom levels. And we also need um, kind of the style rules. Uh, we're using an open source um, rendering service called Map Server. It's been around since 1990. Uh, it's part of the OGC, it's pretty cool. Um, and we're gonna use a font file to actually design the shields. <coughs> So step one is taking this shape file, a rather large global shape file of uh, lines and segmenting out uh, what is the United States and what is the global. So we just did a spatial select. Hey, you're in the United States, great. And then we also had you know, everybody else who is the globe. Um, and then we ran it through two Python scripts. Uh, one was shieldlabels.py and the other one was notify.py. Uh, we also have added these scripts into GitHub so that you guys can use them and play with them if you'd like. And uh, you can notice by the dependencies, we're a pretty open source friendly company, so we use mostly open source tools to build these scripts. <coughs> so first uh, script that we ran through was shieldlabels.py. The main job of this script was to literally curate the label that needed to be shown on top of the shield. Um, it required the input of the line string shape file. It needed to contain an attribute called ref. Um, as Matt er mentioned earlier, we had to modify the impossum file to pick up this tag, um, but ref tag was where you know, the numbers existed that we need to get, and also that spatial select that I mentioned. And it's a longer script, but just to give you an overview of what it did, the first step was dissolve. Why did we dissolve? Uh, we needed to dissolve because as many of you guys who have edited OpenStreetMap know, you aren't creating one long line of Highway 5 all the way from California to Washington. It's you and a million users. So each one of those lines come in as a separate segment. So we needed to dissolve into one long segment in order to do the measurements we need in order to know where to place the node. We also need to split and duplicate the segments. I'll get into that a little more. Uh, we need to designate what type of shield type it was. Was it a U.S. state highway or was it an interstate? And lastly, we needed to create the label and do some string edits on it. <coughs> so dissolving and splitting and duplicating the segments. Um, why did we have to split and duplicate the segments of an already massive line data set that we had? Well, this happened because many of the things that we enter into OpenStreetMap are condensed into one line but two labels. What we really needed was two lines with one label apiece. Um, so as you can see in this ref tag, there's two highways represented by this one line. I needed to break these apart, duplicate them, and have one line per segment. <clears throat> I also needed to designate the shield type. Uh, is it an interstate? Is it a US highway? And you know that was done by you know, basic regex and string searches. Uh, there's nothing like looking at like a piece of regex you wrote like three years ago and it's been like nine months since you have a, had coffee. It's just like, <laughs> that's awesome. 
uh, this fabulous piece of text is basically describing what type of label that I need to get out of the ref tag. It's removing any preceding letters. And if there are letters after the numbers, which are you know a space or a dash, because sometimes you have 99-A or 67, I'm making up stuff, but 67B, uh, we also need to pick up that last letter. <coughs> now we have a new label set that's been you know, process and it has these deduplicated lines and it's dissolved. It's a lot cleaner. Now we can run it through notify.py, which is going to actually create the shield point locations. Um, and these were the requirements that we needed to go into that script. It needed to have the label that we created with all that regex. The shield type is the EUS highway interstate. It was also dissolved and split. Notify.py has two major functions add nodes and thin nodes. So the first one basically just adds a bunch of nodes, and the second one goes back and deletes half of them. Um, and we found this to be very effective for us because we need to, you know, we didn't go into this process knowing right off the top of our head, Zoom 5, which is, you know, about the extent of the continental US, uh, needs to show this many shields to look not dense. So we really need kind of an iterative process to kind of go through and kind of explore how many shields look right for Tableau. And eventually we settled on this. Um, this many uh, points within this radius, you can only have one of that label type. And that's what the nodes is. It just went through and was like, oh, you're the same label, you're too close, it deletes it. <laughs> so this is literally what it looked like when we just undissolving you know, didn't really do a lot of processing on the lines, just said, show me a label. And as you can see, it's pretty dense. There's a lot of scarcity of shield labels up here in this corner. Uh, there's a ton that are just the same thing and are really close together. And after we ran it through this process, this is what it looked like. We now have shields up here that weren't showing up before because we dissolved into longer segments. We had, a, you know, we could pick them up in the measurement. They weren't these, you know, being read as these short little segments that probably didn't have a shield. They were actually longer roads that could have shields. Uh, we also eliminated enough of the duplicate labels that um, we were picking up new labels in the back. Oh good, I know how to work this laptop. <laughs> so you can kind of see the difference. Um, and all this is really good stuff because when you do these type of edits in the back end, you're not asking your front end label rendering collision stuff to do it, the work for you. So it helps our service be both fast and accurate. The final step in the process is styling the rendered output. And like I said, we use Map Server for our rendering engine. And some designers that work at Tableau and work very hard at Tableau uh, help design this font file, which uh, basically is a bunch of stacked fonts. Um, you can see there's, you know, that little, I don't know what they call it, the bracket on the top of the interstate field. Uh, so we literally were stacking these different size fonts on top of each other to produce that graphic that you see on the uh, left. And it was, you know, a pretty nice system. We also, you know, we've kind of stretched the label to accommodate how many characters were in that label. So we didn't have the case of your label is overrunning your shield, which never looks great. Um, lastly, you know, like I mentioned, uh, we're making our code publicly available. Feel free to have fun with it. That's where it is. Matt? Yeah, so like Ari said, uh, we have a GitHub repository that contains the two scripts that um, Ari was describing. Um, and kind of just like, thinking about, you know, concluding thoughts. Through the development of these scripts, we kind of left with the ability to quickly iterate on these differing node values, spacing values, to actually create these points, right? And so that process became fast. The process that was still actually somewhat time consuming was kind of the research that it took to suss through the data and identify what you know, particular types of regular expressions were required to disambiguate, you know, a U.S. interstate from a, a state route or something like that, right? And so you'll notice that uh, in our data set, we actually have just a U.S.-specific set of shields 
that are subset into you know, interstate, state route, et cetera, and then a global set of shields, right? And so kind of where I think it would be interesting is to see if we can kind of like, you know, there's this opportunity for collaboration to actually get research from other people in, uh, you know, what does it take to actually disambiguate, you know, roads in New Zealand, right, from one uh, highway type to another, or roads in Japan for something like, you know, for example. Um, I think, I just kind of think that there's like an interesting opportunity there to help uh, collaborate and kind of like expand, you know, the understanding of uh, road shields for us certainly beyond just, you know, US versus global. So, yeah, um, with that, thanks for uh, giving us a chance to talk and if there's any questions, we'll be happy to answer. Yeah, there was one point in your process where you said that you rendered things into shapefiles, and I'm curious why you chose shapefile. Were you using some Esri software or something? Uh, yeah, sure. So for our map renderer uh, is Map Server, right? And so based on our testing, we uh, decided to use shapefiles as a backing store format uh, because it was the most performant for Map Server, essentially. Yeah. Are you taking advantage of the OSM relations for highway routes? Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think we, yeah. If there's, if there's something that could be useful for us, could you explain like what would be helpful or in using those data? So for example, um, all of Interstate 5 within a given state is gonna be in a relation. Mm -hmm. So you know, some of that disambiguation you were talking about uh, should be handled by that. And same, same way as state routes, I think down to the, some of the county level stuff are, uh, so this um, whole issue of dissolving uh, should be also be made a lot easier cool. because, you know, every time the speed limit change, as you point out, or the number right. of lanes change, you get a different OSM way, but then all those ways are uh, joined together in a relation. Cool. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome, thanks. What was your criteria for, in terms of spacing the shields, for looks good? Do you want to talk? Uh, thanks, Matt. No um, <laughs> I, th I, I could honestly say those decisions were made by another team, the design team, um, which thinks, uh, spends most of their time thinking about how does other people's data look good in our product. So, um, yeah, there was many conversations. There's too much, there's too little, try again. Um, so, uh, was there a criteria? Is it formal? Not today, but I think we kind of got close. They stopped calling us, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, um, you talked about pruning nodes that had the same name, the same number on them. Um, did you put any thought into pruning nodes that have different numbers, say to avoid having clustering around an intersection or a municipality? Uh, that specifically, no, we didn't. Um, and, you know, it's, it is likely that some of the nodes that are missing when we actually see the rendered product are missing because they are taken out by our collision algorithm. Um, we're hoping not too many because the more that we make the front end do, the slower the service runs. Um, but yeah, we didn't do that particular step, but that would be a great idea for future work. Well, thanks everybody. Yeah, thank you.